Melissa. Yes. Have you ever seen a squirrel mess up? <laughs> like just utterly just... fail at being a squirrel? Yeah. I don't think so. Since I've moved to this <laughs> new neighborhood that I live in, I, I, your I, I squirrels guess are worse. Yeah. <laughs> There's something Ow. wrong with the squirrels in my neighborhood. I, I don't understand it. I, I've seen a good number of squirrels just like jump from tree to tree or something like that and just completely miss. And it's just like, oh, how did, is he going to be okay? <laughs> like, and then, But he, he gets up like yeah. everything is fine, runs off. There was another one that I saw that I could have sworn was drunk. Like it, it was like wobbling awesome. around, and then there was one that I saw this past week. Uh, I was walking home from work, and it was trying to run away f f f from me because I, I was w walking up, and it was like it's oh, very shit. scary. Humans, run away! <laughs> uh, but it it tried to go underneath the like fence like i'm on the sidewalk and there's mm -hmm. a fence on one side and it tried yes. to go underneath the fence and it couldn't go underneath the fence like there was not enough space for it to go underneath and so he just like he looked up at me and looked back at the at the fence and was like oh shit what am i gonna do and he keeps like running d -d -d down the length of the fence to oh. be like how do i wait is there a hole how do oh, i get it I'm just like i'm not gonna do anything to you no. <laughs> but there is something wrong with the squirrels in this neighborhood it's wild when you said squirrels who are bad at being a squirrel, I thought that instead of having a nut, they'd have, like, another food that a squirrel isn't supposed to have, like a Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> That's chicken carbonara. What are you doing with that? <laughs> Just somehow still in a small nut shaped and sized ball. Is that a Just Big Just a Mac? carbonara orb. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is a episode 55 of the whatnots captain's log my name is kyle springer i am joined by melissa wilkinson melissa yes. how has your week been <laughs> oh i feel lost and unstuck in time because this is the first time in a while we've been back on our regular time slot because yeah, we just had we've, schedule conflicts. A lot of our shows, forward. we've been like, we're actually getting recorded on Saturday, or we're going to mm -hmm. move it to Thursday, or we're going to, you know. So coming back on this, I'm like, oh, yeah, we record at 9 o'clock, my time. And you're like, no, it's it's my, it's 9 o'clock, my time. 9 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> There's a big confusion about who not whose 9 was it anyway. Yeah. And then I turn them on on my computer and it's covered in a thicker layer of like static cling dust than it really is, than it typically oh, is. I feel like I've been Rip Van Winkled. I feel like I I fell asleep for a thousand years and I woke back up and clocks are wrong. I feel unstuck in time. I'm lost in a vortex, Kyle. So now Do, I, does, I don't know what kind of week I'm having. Is is static on your elect? electronics out there in the midwest something you guys do with a lot or is, is that like that's something that i don't like besides tvs every now and again but that was on the old like crt tvs like I, I don't really have to deal with static on it's not terribly serious but you know just there's a little bit of a, a static huh. aura around anything electronic that just slowly gathers a fine layer of dust around it and i popped open my laptop after the last time I turned it on, and yeah. Ah! Now you're just dist destroying things. <laughs> Put these crystals on my desk for good luck, and what does it give me? I don't know what time it is, and my computer's too dirty, and I'm loud. <laughs> it's okay. I know exactly how, how you feel. When, uh, when Paul and I first mm -hmm. created the Whatnots, he... so. If, if if I'm sure you guys have heard me say the name Paul millions of times, <laughs> like who is this Paul. mysterious? He never shows up anymore. <laughs> uh, so we we were the ones that created the whatnots. He's no longer a a part of the whatnots. He stepped did 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 down, and that's when you stepped up, Melissa. Yep, you um, instead. But we, 
Paul and I were old college roommates, but when we started the Whatnots, we never lived in the same country. Uh-huh. He, uh, so I, I had ju- just moved back to Virginia from Texas, and by that time, he had moved out to uh, Spain, where his parents were at the time or the, was they were portugal? in portugal portugal it... yeah okay um so he like he was out that that way uh and then eventually he moved out to china because he got a <gasps> g- job teaching Eng- english there uh and then he eventually moved back to portugal and then out to korea which is where his family is f- from he's korean and 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 It was just like we were never in the same country. The time zones were super like strange, but their their daylight savings time was a week after the United States. That's the worst. And we didn't know. And so and it like I I. It, it was one of those things that we knew daylight saving time was a problem for us. But I, mm-hmm. I think it was when it was in Korea, especially, that it was like our daylight saving time started and theirs started a week after that. And it's usually j- j- just like, oh, ours starts at midnight, you know, and it's it's midnight here for me at this time, which means he'll be at midnight yeah. in six hours, you, you, you know. So that's mm-hmm. how we thought it, it worked. And... So we had almost that same thing happen where he's like, uh, Kyle, where, where are you? Like, we're supposed to be recording. I'm like, dude, it's not even one yet, you know? You, you, you know? And he's like, uh, yeah, we record at like 2 p.m. my time or something like that. I'm like, yeah, we record at 1 p.m. my time or something, you, you know? And, and he, we're just like, well, wait, we're both right. That doesn't make sense. What is happening Who's here? We're just the like bus? we're just like what what how, yeah, who what is happening here? And then finally we're like, "Oh, daylight savings time mm. just happened for me. It hasn't happened for you yet. It's going to happen next week for you." So we have mm-hmm. this one week where it's just this oddball like things are all at the wrong time and it's just like, "What yeah. in the world is happening?" And it's the strangest uh, feeling. Our business clients are British. Mm-hmm. And their daylight savings is like a, I think a little bit longer, maybe like two or three weeks off of U.S. daylight savings time. So we had to readjust everything like twice a year. Like if you have to call the London office, mm-hmm. this is how you recalculate it. Here, here's a chart. Yeah, that's so funny. That I, why do we even still have daylight savings t- time? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ben Franklin. I, this week at work, one of my coworkers, she calls everybody over. She says, mm-hmm. guys, I have, I have an important question. This is going to bug me all day unless somebody answers it for me. Why can't my body digest sticks? <laughs> what? <laughs> She's like, I can eat a berry. Why can't I eat a stick? Why I mean, can't I eat plastic? Why doesn't my body take that stuff? I guess technically you could. On some of the, if, if it's like a small enough, like you, you could chew it and, and enough to where you could swallow it. But you don't digest just... it well. It doesn't break down. And eventually somebody told her <sighs> enzymes, which was enough to satisfy her for a while. And she's still upset God about the damn fact. damn it, Karen. Enzymes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> She's still upset about the fact that she can't do it. And it seems like some sort of weird variant on body modification. You're a cyberpunk, man. You know. I am a cyberpunk. You are one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'd love to have a robot arm. Oh, I'd love to have like a cybernetic eye. You know, I, I, what are my mutant powers? Can I have laser vision? All she wants is I want to eat a stick. (laughs) Is your coworker a dog? No. <laughs> you want the stick? You want the stick? <laughs> Go get the stick. <laughs> we have another coworker who is vegan, and she makes fun of him all the time. Like, all he ever eats is sticks. <laughs> She's like, why can he eat a stick and I can't? That's sexism. I want to eat a stick. <laughs> that's, not even, what's that? that's not even sexism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is just what we do at the office. We've had... 
the clients visiting all week. Uh-huh. And today, like our main client contact who was the last to leave. She took off and we were all having lunch together first. And I think we spent half an hour just yelling, just talking very loudly and aggressively towards her about stuff she should have eaten in St. Louis, but didn't get to like, okay, the next time you come to town for a business meeting, we have to take you to all of these donuts, all of these pies, all of these ice creams. It was like desserts exclusively. They got into a big Denny's versus IHOP argument. Denny's versus I, which one do I like? IHOP. I think you have to go with IHOP. I, I, I like their their sweets, you know, your the pancakes, your stuffed French toast and what have sure. you. I think Denny's is underrated when it especially for savory stuff. They've got a killer cheesy bacon ranch fry that nobody talks cheesy about. Bacon ranch. Fry. It's like top class cheesy bacon ranch fry. It's just like cheese fries but with bacon and ranch. Yeah, you know, the huh. classic okay. Midwestern style, ranch on it. Ranch yes. on everything. Do you guys do ranch on your pizza? Not as an entire culture, but I know quite a few individuals who partake it's of it. Yes, common ish. Mm-hmm. It's getting okay. common. I I used to do do it a bit in college because I saw someone else do it, and I was Seems like, like I'm, a college thing to I'm do. I'm gonna try it, and so I would drizzle on a a, a, a bit on, like on the actual pizza. Uh, mm-hmm. and I would eat it that way, and it's not bad. But then after after a bit, it was it, it was just like, I love pizza, <laughs> but I know it's not entirely good for me. And putting <laughs> ranch on top of that just kind of makes it like more <laughs> greasy and fatty and stuff like that. It's like I'm gonna like wait and only dip my crust in the ranch. Because that's healthier, even though it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, think so. I I would do it if there were if it was one of these fancy pizzas that kind of has a salad on top of it. You- Sam says uh, when she moved to San Antonio, ranch on pizza or pizza ad- ad- adjacent foods became apparent to me, and she was like, "What? Yeah, that 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 like that wasn't something that I really heard about until college." Mm. oh who knows people do all sorts of weird things with pizza yeah and ranch yeah you know, our, our cultural staple food <laughs> tell me why the, have you seen the movie dodgeball yes tell me why that scene where he's like rubbing the pizza in his in his crotch and like when that like People do all sorts of weird things with pizza. I, I don't remember anything about the movie Dodgeball except for Alan Tudyk just being a pirate. Erg? <laughs> Steve the pirate. And even that I did not stop to think about until you brought up the movie Dodgeball. <laughs> My dad loves like that type of comedy film. Like huh. Nacho Libre, Dodgeball, Napoleon Dynamite, just like that brand of okay comedy he loves the, the, the hat stuff so he's, he's always like let's watch nacho libre like, yeah, <laughs> i like it but yeah, I mean, it's I've, Napoleon s- I, I've seen it a million times <laughs> yeah. my dad is the weirdest taste in movies and that it's straight down the middle dad stuff loves a western my dad goes, loves well, western stuff too goes full in on westerns you know like a classic action movie from the past till now, he'll watch like a, you know, some old World War II movie, and then he'll watch like the John Wick series. He loves there all of it. Yeah. He also loves a musical. We've covered this. I told, I think yeah. I told you once how my, I told you once how my dad got me super into musicals when I was mm-hmm. a kid, and he sat me down like, these are all the greatest musicals. Child, watch them with me. Learn, absorb. It was when now I'm blinking on the name and I shouldn't be. What was the one we watched? The we watched the Shop of Horrors. That one, yeah. Uh, it was per- probably with that because I, I mm-hmm. was at that. Um, I was and I still don't know. I was like, I don't know anything about musicals. How did how did you come upon musicals, Melissa? <laughs> dad, Dad did it. There you go. And, and it was Father's Day this past weekend as it was. well. So. Did you have a yeah. call with your dad? How's did, Mr. Yes. Kyle's dad? 
he <laughs> so he had a funny story to share uh-huh. with me. So my dad likes fast food stuff too. Ah. Uh and he's he's also the kind of person who would who would if his doctor would be like, "All right, Scott, you know, you're getting up there in age. You might have to <laughs> cut back what? on the McDonald's." Dad, he he would be like he be like well yeah no i'm not gonna stop Kyle, eating at mcdonald's or burger king name, if your dad's name is scott springer is he a marvel superhero is this where <laughs> no, you get not. it from <laughs> <laughs> no he, he's not um <laughs> but he, like he's he's more about like quality over quantity so he uh-huh. wants to die happy if that means he's gonna oh, die of a yeah. heart attack yeah eating a wall a, a, a whopper then he's he he then i can say <laughs> he died happy he, right you know, yeah you know. die how you live i get it so he um he was stopping by i think burger king to uh to pick up some food for his sister his 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 aunt or not his aunt my aunt his sister um and she was asking for something very specific it's it's just like well i i it was one of those things like hey there's only really this fast food thing around like there's not much else mm-hmm. that i can pick up what do you want from burger king mm-hmm. it was something super specific but they didn't have it um but Chicken they didn't carbonara orb yeah there was something you, you know like we want the fish fillet oh sorry we're out of fish um mm-hmm. and but like he had already ordered a, a bunch of stuff for himself because he's like well i'm here i might as well get some <laughs> things for myself but he wasn't g- going to get that for him if it wasn't for him like going to get something for his sister mm-hmm. and so he like after he was like, all right, and, oh, yeah, and one fish filet, you, you, you know, and they were like, oh, well, we don't have fish filet right now. We're, we're, we're all out. He had this, like, conundrum, and he was like, this is the worst. Where I was like, I wouldn't have even come here if I knew that they, like, mm-hmm. if they, they, they didn't have this thing. Your but research. here I am already bu- 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 buying a whopper and two double cheeseburgers for myself like what am i gonna like what am i gonna do so it's like all right well i guess i'll just get all this food for myself mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like it was the weirdest thing because i would just you like i wasn't going to stop there because we had stuff at home mm-hmm. but he just like he just felt we'll so so defeated i'm just, it's I'm just never like worth it he, he just felt so defeated i'm just like mm-hmm. but it is a whopper <laughs> but I wouldn't have gotten it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I had a Whopper this week for the first time in a long time because I grew up in a McDonald's household. Okay. It's not like we completely eschewed Burger King altogether. Shoot. It just was our, our less common. Day. What? I said eschewed. Word of the day. Yeah, I, I brought it out real fancy. I got to <laughs> dress up the fact that I am through and through a fast food person. That is my vice in life french fries oh <laughs> did you see the my grave. <laughs> what is the that did you see this new uh thing that kfc put out kfc cheetos <laughs> oh is, the, oh, is what this a combination. It? Have, have have you seen this i don't believe so look it up it's a cheeto chicken sandwich Mmm. Images. Let's find a good image. This is what I get for being behind on my brother, my brother, and me. Because if I if I would have been caught up, I'm sure I would have heard about this. Bam! I am showing the good, lovely people of the interwebs KFC's Cheeto Chicken Sandwich. It's a limited time, like crispy chicken sandwich with Cheetos Cheeto. and hot sauce and like I guess huh. cheese or something. It just it looks like. It, I, I can hear myself getting diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear my arteries clogging <laughs> at, like as as sad. as I look at this thing. It is <sighs> like. But like then it b- bothers me because hot Cheetos are the thing like that's the popular thing right now. People love hot Cheetos, but it's oh. not hot Cheetos. It's regular. Do you even have this thing where you live? I believe this might be St. Louis specific. Do you have red hot riplets? 
Uh, not that I know of. I'm not a big fan of like the, I'm going to get the hot fries oh, or the hot either. version or that stuff. Like, I don't really I, pay attention. I don't in- interact with it, but I do regard it as a St. Louis staple the same way I do like Budweiser beer or sports. <laughs> are, oh, are you looking at, at the thing now? <laughs> there's Cheetos on it. I yes! thought it was just Cheeto breaded. No, there is legitimate oh, Cheetos. That seems texturally unsound. <laughs> <laughs> Sam comments, Red Hot Riplets is a kind of spicy uh, potato ch- chip sold in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Red Hot Riplets are ridge-cut chips covered with hot chili pepper and sweet barbecue powdered seasoning. Yeah. The label describes the flavoring as St. Louis-style hot sauce. That actually sounds really good. I've had a couple of them, like when friends have had bags, and I'm like, well, I ought to participate in the cultural zeitgeist. They are good. Like, I'm not a spice person, so I did eat, like, two of them, and then I was done. But they are good. Okay. Interesting. Um, KFAF, one of the podcasts that kind of funny does, uh-huh. They did a. They do a lot of taste test stuff of like. Oh yes. We're we're gonna do a blindfolded, uh, pop tarts test, and you're gonna have to name all of the flavors and rank them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they they go and find the like the strangest pop tart flavors that you can find, and they'll be like, "What pop tart flavor is this?" Uh, but they did one on all of the like hot stuff. So they got the hot Cheetos. They got the mm-hmm. extra hot ones. They got the like the the hockeys the hot f- yes f- fries and stuff like that and they just bought a whole b- b- bunch of them to like rank them and, and stuff like that 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 stuff is some sometimes really fun to, to watch because they don't know what they're they're what they're putting it in their mouth and they don't know if it's going to be like insanely hot or, or, mm-hmm. or if it's something like oh it's just or hot like cheetos like hot. it's not that bad yeah you know yeah so My favorite YouTuber is a guy called Brutal Moose, Mm -hmm. and he started doing... Are you familiar with him? Was that a knowing nod? You mentioned that that is your favorite YouTuber, so I'm familiar just from you being like, that's my favorite YouTuber. He started doing video game reviews and then like reviews of weird like Goodwill bargain bin movies he would find, Mm -hmm. and then he did a review cooking and eating and ranking kid cuisine tv dinners it was that one or the lunchables i forget which one was first but then those ended up doing really well so he's had this little side like he's got this running series on his channel called brutal foods where he like sometimes he tries out a weird recipe and tries to cook something himself often unsuccessfully or barely successfully Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times he's getting a weird frozen food, cooking it and eating it and telling you about the experience. (laughs) And he did a video where he got he had somebody else get get for him three frozen banquet pot pies. Okay. And he was going to do a blindfolded taste test of each pot pie. And because somebody else, you know, fuck up a pot pie. Yeah, yeah, and because somebody else bought them for him. He's like, I mm-hmm. don't even know what the flavors are. Like, this isn't like a match them up. Like, I don't know anything about these. I was just provided he, three he, he's, pies. He's not looking at the, like, p- packaging so no, he knows like, which one is which. Whoever it was, though, I guess, gave him a card with directions. Like, okay, for pie A, it's this temperature, you know, for this long or whatever. So he's eating these pies, and he has a blindfold on. Mm-hmm. And he says, I know this is a video. It's not really in interesting for you the audience to just watch a blindfolded person you know you have my eyes to look at you need the connection of my eyes so and he took a picture of his own eyes and he and it's like blown stuck up, <laughs> it's blown up like 25 percent too big and so it's just like him with these giant, giant fake eyes, eyes <laughs> that's big, fantastic unblinking fake eyes eating three banquet pot pies and also he's in front of a green screen so he is just green screening himself into like space he's just floating done... through space blindfolded eating a pot pie and it's one of the greatest videos i've ever seen kf af will do stuff like that they will uh they've they've done stuff where it's like what's in the box and it's mm. like you're blindfolded. One of them is blindfolded, and they have a 
cardboard box with a hole in the side and the back cut out so the ca- the camera can see it. Uh-huh. And they, they'll just put something in, in the box and that oh, one person like has to like reach in the dead their, man's eyes. Yeah, they, and they have to like reach their hand in and feel what it is. And it's the funniest shit because they have no idea what it is and they're freaking out. It's like, it's just a tennis ball. Like, you know, but they have no idea what it is. Um, and yeah, they've had like rank those hot fries, rank those cereals, rank those pop tarts. Uh, they've done like ranking Oreos, mm. uh, ranking different like energy drinks and stuff like that. Uh, but yes, yeah, sometimes stuff like that is the funniest stuff to watch because the, the p- person that is blindfolded mm-hmm. gets so anxious about yeah. like i don't know what this is i don't know what i'm putting in my body it's, it's disconcerting <laughs> you're cut off from the rest of the world and you just have it's just you and the candy and this candy is your only lifeline yeah so or, if you or get something like weird eat it to them so like uh, they're, they're just like ah. <laughs> it's funny stuff uh, let's see, Melissa. I wanted to ask you about this because I, I yeah. just, I saw it on Twitter and I, I didn't know anything about it. And you are my Disney and Pixar expert. I am. Yes. What, thank what you. is Soul? They announced it, Soul. It's that is very gonna be, little yet. <laughs> yeah. Is is that all that's out there on on this thing? Is it just like, hey, what? new movie called Soul coming out next year? Here's the logo. What you have heard is pretty much what I have heard, which is like, yeah, it's coming out next year. See, I know just as much as Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> we both know the exact Disney same expert. smidgen because, you know, it ain't hard to absorb a smidgen. Yeah. <laughs> You've not done the deep years of research that I I've... have into park snacks, for instance. <laughs> uh, it is a movie... I believe it takes place in New York City and the cosmos. And it is a story about hmm. what makes us people do we have souls, <laughs> which is so high concept. What am like, I? No, we don't Who know. Made like, me? <laughs> do I have a soul? <laughs> you know, like, what, you know, who's our protagonist? What era is this set in? Oh, it's sort of a big blank slate, which is exciting. Like you look back at the past brave was a blank slate once it's like uh it it will be a historical movie about a princess and that's all you know huh disney who would have thought (laughs) but pixar's (laughs) first historical movie about a princess (laughs) yeah um okay so that like uh, yeah i I, I guess there's not much more to to ask about that then i was like ooh, i can ask melissa about that or i can ask updated as i learn more from my various disney news outlets i have many there you go. Well, speaking of D- Disney and Pixar stuff, yes, Toy Story four came out. Uh, this uh, this is day. opening weekend. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna try and go this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sounds like you and I might try and do a reactor core episode yeah. on that. I don't think. Jess is going to be joining us. Aww. She was she was ho- hoping to. I think she's going on vacation. We're hoping if if, you, if you've seen us do a couple a- 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 episodes with Jess mm-hmm. Beaver in the past, we're hoping to get her uh, back yeah. on somewhat more consistently, especially on the Reactor Core. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see how how that goes. I think she's going to be on vacation this this next week. Fighting. Um, yeah. So. Hopefully we can do a Reactor Core episode on Toy Story 4. I think that should be a lot of fun. I can carve out some time this weekend to go see it. I am also going to my required musical for the week. And I also am trying to go to an adult circus. There you go. (laughs) You you messaged me and was like, Kyle, I might be going to this like burlesque circus thing. And I was like, oh. That sounds like a lot of fun. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, sure. If we need to move Captain's Log, then mm. just l- 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 let me know. Um, and I guess you're going Sunday? Yes. I asked the one person who I thought would be interested in it and could go at such short a time because I found out about this thing yesterday and it's yeah. like running just this weekend. 
like, okay, oh boy, got to get a plan into action. So I asked my roommate, she's like, I'm busy the whole weekend. I'm like, okay, that leaves me alone. Yeah. I don't know who the heck else I'm going to drag into doing this dang thing. So Sunday night. So next week, if all goes according to plan, I can report back about sexy supernatural burlesque circus. And yeah. not only that, it is in a big tent in a mall parking lot. Very supernatural. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Because whenever someone says supernatural, two things pop into my head. Yes. The actual, like, supernatural stuff, like ghosts and mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, the, the occult, you, mm -hmm. you know, st st stuff like that. And then there's the TV show. <laughs> it is... It is like occult stuff. I like in the couple promo images I saw. There's a lady with like big maleficent horns, Which, kinda. You like you s said that, and it, mm -hmm. it, it was like this is a supernatural burlesque circus, and I was like, well, that can go one of two ways. I would honestly <laughs> and love. To honestly, see a I wouldn't circus put it based on the CW series Supernatural. I, I wouldn't put it past a burlesque troupe to do a, a supernatural the the show themed show kyle, kyle that would be kind of really cool <laughs> are you familiar with nerdlesque uh no boy i am not it's the greatest form of entertainment I've, known I've, to mankind i've not gone to any kind of burlesque show I've only, or anything i've like only that. been to the nerdy kind <laughs> <laughs> like i went to a show it was at a nerd comedy festival in Chicago. And so they had a series of nerdlesque acts. And like one of them was Harry Potter themed. One of them was Sherlock themed. One of them was like Batman themed. Maybe I'm forgetting most of these. It, it was great. It's such a, it's such a fun time. And I went to another one that was at a comedy club and it was not really nerd themed. The premise of it was all of these, Dancers were going to get up, perform an original comedic monologue that they had written, and then they were going to do the dance act. And it was a series of like six of these things. And that was one of the greatest live shows I have ever seen. That sounds one of fun. These, one of these ladies comes out and she's wearing like jeans and like a red flannel shirt and like a jean jacket. She's got a baseball hat and she's talking in this really thick Jersey accent. Uh -huh. She's like, I, and she, the, she's like calling into a radio station in this sure. monologue. And she's like, I should win these tickets to go see Bruce Springsteen because I love the boss. I know all the lines to his songs. I'm a great dancer. I'm so much fun at concerts. I'm possessed by Satan. You know, Lord Beelzebub <laughs> commands me. And did I mention I am a really great singer? And then they start playing Bruce Springsteen's Dancer in the Dark. And she starts stripping and dancing. And as she takes off all of her, like, Jersey 80s working class clothes, uh -huh. she just has pentagrams drawn all over her body. Yes. <laughs> and she, like, draws a summoning circle. Pentagram pasties, this, like, yes, and it's tattoo. Just <laughs> beautiful demonic dance slash jersey girl who loves bruce springsteen amazing <laughs> there's another lady whose uh monologue was about her being the best dairy queen employee in like the entire state it's uh -huh. like nobody can make a blizzard like i can nobody can put the little tw twirly twist on top of the ice cream cone like i can and I forget what song she's dancing to, but she has all the ice creams like as props and she's like spraying whipped cream on herself and like drizzling herself in like fudge sauce. <laughs> but yeah, all like that, I can, I can see that. Like she's getting it out of a Dairy Queen container. <laughs> That's so funny. It's you got to get out to it, Kyle. Find yourself some There's... good, solid, funny and or nerdy burlesque. I don't know if there's really like a good scene for nerdy burlesque stuff near because there there's a it's couple of spots where the, there's a couple of spots where like where burlesque stuff happens mm -hmm. kind of around or like it's a it's a venue where shows will be and stuff like that but every now and then there'll be some uh some burlesque stuff I think it's usually the Suicide Girls okay one um which. I I I knew a couple people who were trying to get into the Suicide 
girl stuff. I keep wanting to say Suicide Squad, <laughs> but that's that's not it. No, uh, there was but a I also know that Suicide Girls. Show. Yeah, I've I've also heard some very bad things about uh, Suicide Girls and how they run all of that stuff. So, mm. uh, but but yeah, so like I like it's that stuff. So I feel like mm. it's like it happens every once in a while, but it's usually only like the the like. I, yeah, I guess more like mainstream, like, oh, it's the suicide girl because they're edgy, you, mm -hmm. you, you know. Um, Dick, I'm sure you could. You're, this we don't even have a, camp, like, we it? barely have a Richmond Comic Con. Oh. Like, we, we have cons, and I, I, I have a great comic book store, but whenever there's comic cons around here, I mm -hmm. usually find out, like, the weekend it's happening. And it's Aww. like, like guys you should be promoting this like mm -hmm. let me know like this is something i would like to go like attend and just mm -hmm. like you, you're not spreading the word the target audience is kyle yeah like i should and i live on the internet on twitter like all of that stuff i should know about this and just like it's like hey you how come you're not at this thing i had no idea this thing was happening yeah same thing thanks with for me. telling me it's adult circus like i found out the day it <laughs> rolled into town it's like well your show starts in 12 minutes otherwise i would be there tonight yeah i've i've been to two comic cons here in mm -hmm. richmond one was really tiny and it was in uh like a it was in a like a what kind of room it was a big like conference oh, yeah. room yep. at a hotel like kind of thing it was super room. small yeah um Fun fact, that was also where I saw one of my life drawing models. You told outside me of about that. this. Yeah. Larry. He was, an, he was an old guy, and he had oh a fantastic four-back pack. Now you have clothes um, on, huh? Yeah. It's like, oh, Larry, I, I didn't know you liked comics. <laughs> <laughs> How's it uh, hanging? That's not what I wanted to say. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then the, I, we, we went to a Wizard World. They yeah. they had a show here, um, and that was at the convention center. Um, but then, yeah, like I, there was one here like a month ago, and I didn't find out till the mon till like the Monday after, oh. and I was just like, "What? <laughs> I could have gone." Mm. <sighs> oh well. We'll do. Oh, it. Well. we'll get there. Yeah. I haven't been to a con in a while, and next year I want to make it the year. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping. I I still want to make it out to RT, RTX, mm -hmm. which is the Rooster Teeth convention. I still want to make it out to E3. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can go next year, that'd be sweet. Because next Where year, put an E3. Where is that? E3 is in Los Angeles. Ooh, yeah, big leagues. Yeah. Um, which E3 is kind of going downhill, but they're about to release all the new consoles and stuff like that so it'd be neat to be there when mm -hmm. they're unveiling all the like and the new xbox is gonna be like xbox 3000 <laughs> i'll be like oh my god <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> um it like I, I would like to do that that stuff i would like to eventually make it out to san diego comic con or new york but one day we'll see mm -hmm. we'll see uh before we get too far off from all the disney pixar stuff because ah. we did start going down that road yes, i did yes. want to give a shout out to belinda G -G garcia yes! uh and and also kind of funny um uh, because they they have been doing toy story in review oh of... i thought you were going to talk about belinda's trip to galaxy's edge oh yeah she is there right now i saw a, <sighs> a, a, a picture of 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 her uh in front of that old piece of j -j 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 junk the millennium falcon um but no she so she she lives out in san francisco right mm -hmm. next to kind of funny uh she's hosted kind of funny games daily with them uh but she is also a huge disney and pixar yes. fan uh and 
kind of funny does a podcast called in review Mm -hmm. where they go through different series of movies and just one by one they review all of those movies they've done marvel in review they've done spider-man in review they've done mission impossible in review um and the one that they've been doing the past couple weeks has been toy story in review and belinda has got to be on those and help hosts hosts those Uh, and it's been every toy story movie leading up to toy story 4 which Mm -hmm. again comes out this weekend and they Mm -hmm. are gonna be doing i think i think they're doing it live on tuesday uh is is when that 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 will be so shout out to belinda friend of the show she's done some podcasts with us yeah she loves those movies yeah that's a really great project for her exactly Um, oh so yeah, because I like that would have been one of the things I was like, but Belinda, come join us on on our Toy Story Four Reactor Corps. But she's she's out there with the big, big leagues, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> she is making all kinds of moves. Hmm. There you go. Uh, let's see what what else is happening in the world this week. Let me ask you this, okay. Melissa. You've had this on. Our, our list of potential things two weeks yes in a row <laughs> oh i thought i would have to drive you into this kyle look at you you volunteered well so i mean like you can bring up stuff whatever <laughs> you can be like hey we're gonna t- t- talk about this or just <laughs> interrupt the conversation and be like mm-hmm. how do you feel about it blah blah blah, blah. but you've had this on so we 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 have a list of like potential yes. things we can talk about if we need to move the c- c- conversation along mm-hmm. and so, sometimes things stay on there more than one week if we miss it and it's like okay it's still very relevant for the next one mm-hmm. i'm 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 gonna let you ask the qu- question and then i'm gonna basically throw it right back at you and you'll see why oh okay i'm gonna make Kyle. a fool out of myself no, that's fine. What I wrote in our text document is, what is your OTP? Melissa, what does OTP mean? <laughs> I, I literally have no idea what it means. I thought this was common enough internet slang by now. It, it is. I, I just, I, I've seen it everywhere. <laughs> I just never asked. I never Googled it. I never cared. That's, this that's is like okay. that's what I'm here for. This is like this is like me opening the door. Like, hello, fandom. How's that? Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, you put your hat right back on, yeah, like Grandpa yeah. Simpson in that gif, and then you walk out of the brothel again. Exactly. Yeah. That's like I'm. I'm not gonna go into fandom that far. I don't need to do this. It, it stands for one true pairing. Basically, yeah, it's what, what is your Sam says. What is your favorite ship? This favorite is something ship. I've been wanting to ask you for a while because we talk about oh, a particular relationship in whatever topic we may be covering for the week over in review show. But like, what sticks with you long after you've watched or read or listened to or whatever the medium is? What do you like go back and think about? What did you like very sincerely like? root for not just like hmm this storyline is interesting and i want to see how it progresses but yes kiss you... each other <laughs> have you ever had one of those oh hell yes okay lay it uh, on me um so, so, so yeah are, are you wanting to, 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 to know what one is my favorite or just like what is the stuff that i root for <gasps> in, in, in like hey this kind of otp is what i'm gonna be Oh, I would like specifics or I would like this, like the tropes you fall for every time. Okay. Um, first of all, Sam, no, I have not seen fanfic fruit ratings. That, that has not. I have either. That has not uh, c- c- crossed my Twitter feed or stuff like that. Um, I, I want to say the one that sticks out in my head is Chloe and Max from Life is Strange okay um i i really like them chloe is this like very meek mild or no uh max is the very meek mild mannered uh girl who's who 
wants to be polite, doesn't really mm-hmm. want to say the like mean things, and always wants to be there and be a good f- 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 friend. Where uh, Chloe is this like punk rock chick that like yeah. fuck the world, like let's <laughs> let's go smoke some weed and, and let's go thrash and do this and that Mm -hmm. and um there's definitely a lot of subtext if not just flat out text that they they like each other and they are both at least bisexual yes Um, this is what i've heard from other people who have played this game yeah and there's a a scene i want to say in like episode two or three of that first life is strange uh game where chloe dares max to kiss her she's Mm -hmm. like she's being this bad influence on her but they're such they make such a good like pairing Mm -hmm. that like they 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 both uh like they're they're both good influences on each other but at the same time they're so opposite that it's like they, they they just yeah, like I, I don't know. It's fun to see them inter, 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 interact, and they're kind of gay together. And so I'm, I'm just like, yes, nice. be gay, make out, <laughs> do stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> and 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 so yeah, I, like w- immediately in the game when that stuff started happening, I was like, yes, this is the route that I will. I want. I want them mm-hmm. to be gay. I want mm-hmm. them to live happily ever after and make out and fuck the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Yeah, and it's 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 one of those games that by the end you kind of have to choose like if oh. that's what you want, and yeah. and uh, yeah, like that's the one that I'm just like I don't care what happens, they need to be together. Okay, <laughs> break the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Sam job. says so. Before there, uh, there was a site that allowed uh, tagging. There was a fan fiction slang for how smutty oh! a thick was, yes! uh, and by oh! the sort of citrus fruit mentioned in the summary, lemon being the highest amount of smut, I believe. Interesting. I've heard, I've heard the term lemon ratings. before, but I didn't know that was like the far end of a rating system. Like something could also be a grapefruit interesting huh. i did, i i've never seen that or at least that i know of i'm i am not a fan fiction reader but i've absorbed a lot of the lexicon and kind of the i know yeah, it I'm, in, I'm in theory but not in practice fan fiction um so yeah chloe and max that's a good I, one i never really got into Korasami. I I I I like it, but I feel like it came too abruptly. I can understand that, that. Yeah, especially because um, it wasn't originally where the story was directed, and they kind of rerouted themselves partway through the series. Yeah. Uh. I f- I feel like a lot of my OTPs are like gay ones. Same uh, here. Honestly, I could name you a bunch of pairs of dudes. I think my favorite pair of ladies is. Velma and Marcy from Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Wh- which one was? Her nickname Marcy? was Hot Dog Water because her dad oh, yes. was a bad theme park, and she had to shower in leftover water from when they made hot dogs. I, re- I that remember that now. Okay. Poor nerd girl. The what those two get up to in season two is really fantastic. Uh, so one of my favorite animes is The Legend of Galactic Heroes. It's phenomenal. It's if 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 you like uh big space operas, if you like Victorian k- kind of military wow. type of stuff out in space, uh that's what this is. If you like shows that are political, uh Oh, this is like or, old school space opera stuff. It's old school space opera opera it's very sprawling it's very much this military history like it it all of the battles and political drama within that show often mirror stuff that has happened in real life on earth um so it's all like oh this battle is supposed to represent the the french fighting this thing and this one war you know um but it's a very very complex 
show. I, I, I would recommend it almost if you're a Game of Thrones fan. It has that okay, um, like I that sprawling that. level of like what is going to happen here. Um, and it's it's a super fantastic show. It's the it to kind of give a quick synopsis. There's two sides. There's like a democratic side, and then there's this uh, side that is run by a dick. Dictator, mm-hmm. uh, and so of of c- c- course, dictator bad, democracy good. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the, the, the democracy is really corrupt, and mm-hmm. it's it like it, it it sucks. Like they like it, it is not a good form of whatever is happening th- there. But the main character on the democratic side is this guy that you can really relate to. He's a more like everyday man. He's a not a he, he's the reluctant hero like i don't want to do, do, do this but he's really really good at, at tactics and stuff um and then there's the like dictator's side and yeah again he, like it's mm-hmm. it's a dictatorship uh but he's really benevolent and the people love him and it's, mm-hmm. it's and so it's just like they're supposed to be the bad guys but they like they're they're on to something you know and so it's this weird like all right so democracy seems like it would be a good thing here's maybe what's wrong with it dict a dictatorship or in whatever form that might take here's some of the good things and the bad things and all of Mm -hmm. this stuff um but the dictator himself has this right hand man, man that he grew up with and their best friends and there is the hella subtext (laughs) oh nice but it like it's like that's also not the show like it is not about their relationship Mm. it is not like they don't ever kiss they don't it like it's it's none of that stuff but it's just like man He's really looking to and like he's looking at into his eyes really longingly. <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah. laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Sam mentions that uh, she will never forgive Voltron for uh, oh, uh, other things yeah. for uh, for among uh, other things building up their this relationship between two characters, including events prior to the first episode only to suddenly have them act like strangers in the final season yeah the, that stuff sucks too yeah i think sam has brought up what happened with voltron like every time we have talked since it happened yeah um i i, I still need to watch that show i've seen like the first three seasons mm. and then fell off of it i i've just seen the clip she shows me um Let's see another one that I'm mm-hmm. thinking of. So one, it, I, I don't know if I would say this is an OTP, but I, sh- I showed you Kids on the Slope. Yes. Yeah, we, we did an episode of the review show on that one. Mm-hmm. And c- kind of that like triangle that's happening yeah. there in that show, that like, like friendship that. triangle. It's, yeah, it's, it, it, that show is more of a b- bromance than mm-hmm. a romance but the yeah that 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 one i'm always like at the end i'm always just like yeah i yeah, love this, yeah, this so you've so got good. otps and then this you've got so awesome. an, an ot3 that's also yeah. a perfectly legitimate <laughs> there <you> go. term <laughs> i mean i i don't want them to all have a big o- o- orgy or anything yeah, like, like that bro-TP. but it's that's yeah. a thing like they they all just need to be good friends exactly yes i got plenty of those too for sure yeah when I, and you know me, Kyle, I'm a, I'm a big old sap. I think in mm-hmm. everything we have covered that is some sort of romance in it, I'm like, now let's stop and we'll talk about the romance part for a while. Let me tell you why Harvey Kinkle is such a good boyfriend for Sabrina Spellman. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old when, Harvey K- Kinkle. When I was a kid, I think the romance in pop culture that I liked the most was Jesse and James from Pokemon. Okay, okay, yeah. They're still up there. They're still my, like, number one nostalgic fave. Mulder and Scully was also a big one for True. me growing up. That's I love, a good one. These are what I love. I love villains. I love villains and heroes together. And I love badly matched investigative partners. 
Yeah. <laughs> like you've heard me mention these Dresden Files books over mm -hmm. and over again for the Definitely. supernatural content of them. It also, this is not what it is there to do. This is not its mission, but it also just coincidentally happens to be one of my favorite romances I've ever read. Because it's this wizard who works as a private investigator in Chicago. He's the only wizard in the phone book and everybody makes fun of him. And he's like, well, I, yeah, but I can find that lost ring if you need it found. I need the money. You need the lost ring. My magic can do it, whatever. Mm -hmm. There is a police detective who he works for. She is in charge of basically the X-Files of the police station. Okay. Like anything that's too weird, they're like, ah. Oh, I don't know what to do with this. This doesn't fit into normal paperwork. Give it to Karen. Karen's got it. Here you go, Lieutenant. Damn Murphy. it, Karen. Karen. It's Emza. It's enzymes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up about the goddamn sticks. <laughs> <laughs> so she brings Dresden into all of these cases, and she's like, I... I don't know how deep I go into this. Okay. But I know that whenever there's a weird thing, I call you, you know about it, you fix it. And it's one of those romances where like each of them looks at the other one like, you're not just my favorite person. You are the best person I know. You're so smart and brave and heroic and capable and really kind. And what would I do without you? And it is also, and it, it's like that back and forth bantering, like, yeah. you know, Miss Matt, I, I believe in this stuff and I don't. And he's also s crazy tall and she's super short, like all, <laughs> all the classic, like diametrically opposed opposite stuff. Sure. It is also the slowest burn I have ever encountered. This is a 15 novel series so far. They really get together at the end of book 15. It, oh, took wow. them, yeah. it took them that long. So all it's of last year when I was reading through this series, I'm like, it's got to be now, right? Because the second she shows up in like chapter one of book one, it's like, oh, that's the love interest, isn't it? He's going to wind up with her, right? And you keep reading and it's like, no, really? Not yet. This has got to be the book, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least like a Christmas book party scene with mistletoe <laughs> come on guys they don't have that one they do have the classic like you just gave me a great idea that will finally let me solve this problem let me grab you and kiss you suddenly in an act of joy yeah. it's got one of those it's got like i have to give you mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation after you almost drown and then when you're back to life then it almost becomes kind of like a kiss it's got the, wow, I didn't realize how much I liked you and Scylla until I saw you all dressed up. Like, all of these classic, like, super corny tropes. And this is such a original, inventive, like, incredible urban fantasy series mm -hmm. with this romance in it that just leans into just wholehearted, sincere earnestness. Yeah, he's gonna really look at her real special after she wears a dress corny as that is that's what's <laughs> happening here yeah the only other one i can think of is nico and carolina from the runaways okay this again is something i'm not familiar with yet yeah that's a real good comic we'll have to read that I it's wanna, by yeah, brian I wanna get uh and it's it takes place in the marvel universe mm -hmm. but basically they just gave him his own section like the whole story takes place out in L.A. Yeah. So all the rest of them are oh, out in yeah. New York. You know, That's so he's no like, it's, it's like, you can basically do whatever you want mm -hmm. here. Um, But I I like a lot of Brian K. Vaughn stuff because he usually has some kind of very simple premise that mm -hmm. he ex explores. Uh, In the case of The Runaways, it's like, you know how every teenager has felt like their parents are the bad g g guys. Yeah. Well, what if they actually are super villains? <laughs> you, you, you know, and it's like, well, all of these k k k kids then run away. That's what they do. And they decide to fight Why? back. Uh, yeah. And so it like, it's, it's just this, like, huh, that's super simple. I like that. And then, yeah, he makes a whole book out of it and it's fantastic. Um, and the Hulu sh show, of it is also very good yeah like that's what you've told me mm -hmm. I've, I've put these on my list of 
superhero youths I ought to investigate. Because for somebody who's in a teen superhero RPG, I am woefully behind on other teen superhero stories. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to talk about Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, boy. Because it's hit Netflix. Have, have That's you right. Have you ever seen any of this show? I, I, I feel like you've at least heard of it. Yeah, for sure. And when I started trying to get into anime as like a fourth or fifth grader like that was one of the big one of the ones, ones yeah. i knew about and i think maybe i saw like an episode or two that i could get my hands on somehow and then in college my roommate was really into it and she had like this nice set of dvds that i would watch and i think i just got oh she insisted i watch the subtitled version mm-hmm. which is a little bit more demanding like i can't put it on while i do anything else i really have to sit yeah, there and focus on it and it's college, I'm busy, so I only get through like eight episodes over the semester, and then she takes it, you know, the box set back home with her over like winter break, and like, I just didn't bring it back the next semester, and I forgot about it. I'm like, I don't remember what happened anyway. So I have a general idea of Evangelion, but not really any specifics. It's it's one of my favorites, mm-hmm. and I feel like a lot of people would tell you this is one of like, yeah, one of the top 10 a- a- animes that you need to watch you know like th- th- this one is super important um but it's also one of those shows either you really love it or you really hate it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if uh, i've heard from anybody who hates it just people that are like i don't get it yeah just... it's it's mostly that it mm-hmm. it it seems competent and mysterious and then the ending is just like whoa wait what the fuck <laughs> like how how did we get here yeah um I, I i i did an old episode of a podcast where we covered big o uh which is yes. another a- anime that i big lo- o I love loved. and that one is also super confusing yep i have no i i still have no idea what happened in that show and i've gone into like deep dives of the lore and what this could potentially Mm -hmm. mean all all, all of this stuff and this is up there in in those yeah lots of like weird for weird sake yeah well yeah i mean it it has a lot of like teen angst and existential crisis t- type of stuff mm-hmm. and a lot of religious iconography and agnosticism but it's yeah it's one of those ones that like most people can kind of follow it and they know uh-huh. that it's leading to something but yes. then when that something happens it's just what <laughs> what what is even happening like it mm-hmm. just it goes completely like i have no idea what's even happening um but yeah, it's been in licensing hell for oh. a number of years now. You couldn't stream it legally oh, anywhere. I didn't know that. Um, at, at, at least the English d- 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 dubs. Um, but yeah, Netflix finally g- 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 got it, but they redubbed and resubbed it. Oh. Huh. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course of course a lot of fans aren't happy about that there's new actors all of that stuff the original actors wanted to reprise their roles and apparently there were petitions started hmm. that, that to, to to help them you know reprise their roles because this is such a seminal work mm-hmm. you know it's like hey yeah like i would love to reprise my role on this super important thing you know uh and Apparently, yeah, they like re- they changed the script. It's an all new actors, like all of this stuff, and so people aren't taking to that very well, especially because the original creator helped to supervise the English dub, so it could be accurate to what he actually wanted it. Um, and Netflix didn't even approach the original. Hmm. 
actors to like redub the stuff or you know so like it's just a whole bunch of things that like oh they ch change this this one character who is gay in the show now they make it so it's like well maybe you can argue hmm. that he's not actually gay he says something else here uh there's also they lost the license to the ending theme song so they have to oh. change the theme song oh. and like it's just like what this is like this is it's one of those things like it's great that we now have this show to be able to stream but this is not the version you should watch it, it's mm -hmm. it's one of, the, one of those things of, of like i'm sure it's overall fine and mm -hmm. you're still gonna get you know the major plot points and and, and stuff like that it, you know it's not like they're completely changing the story mm -hmm. and stuff like that it's, it's smaller stuff but still like that representation matters that you know all of that stuff and so it's it's making a big ruckus hmm. but i in one of the discord servers i was in we were talking about all of that stuff today and talking about all sorts of giant robot stuff hmm. it was great because i i like mecha <laughs> anime so it was good it was a good day <laughs> good day for big robots yes what are your top three big robots? Uh, big robots or like series of like, hey, here's a. I was just going to ask about individual robots. Individual robots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I w well, I would say my number one is, what is the one that? Uh, I don't remember what it, it's called. I, well, you know, what? I'll just go with the classic Gundam RX seventy eight. Okay. Um, I know what a Gundam looks like. It's, it's the original. Is it that main one? Is it like the Optimus Prime of Gundams? Basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that that one's real basic though. Um, mm -hmm. I I I was gonna see like oh maybe one of the ones from down the road like the gundam double zeta or something like that I, I i don't know um but yeah that that's a good one um i i do think ava unit one is a good one yeah and oh, i really i i don't want all them uh why am i looking on my phone when i have my computer right here i kind of liked the designs from knights of sidonia Hmm. Let's see. Giant. What do they call their uh, giant robots? What are they? I'm pilot? also just googling the phrase "giant robots." Uh, okay. There's this the Knights fun. of Sidonia Wikipedia page. That one, like Knights of Sidonia mega fan out there on the internet is screaming at me right now. I'm like you idiot, Kyle. Hmm. Uh, what if what what do they take out? What are the things called? Follows the adventures of guard pilot Nagate, so I guess they're called guards. I don't know. I kind of like those designs. I don't really remember remember what they look like. I don't. I don't think I've ever actually sat down to be like, here's my favorite robot. <clears throat> here's my second favorite robot. <laughs> Something Here's my we third should... favorite robot. Well, this is something we should do on like a Patreon bonus episode. Just pick like a very specific topic. Like, okay, we're we're gonna draft it. We're both gonna come back with our top five or ten lists or whatever. Let's get Here's some an... numbers behind this. Here's an interesting question. So first of all, Sam um, mentions her her top three robots as uh, the. As Voltron, as Megas XLR, and yes! Iron Giant. That was my that's, list. That's a good one. Iron Giant, Megas Iron XLR, and then I was going to say one of but, the Pacific Rim Jaegers. Maybe good old classic Gypsy Danger. But Sam asks a good question in the chat here. Do Digimon count as giant robots? I can't handle this. It... I I feel like I'm inclined to say no. 
because they are, they are digital? Dig digital monsters. They're not an actual like robot in in real life. Here's here's my concern. Right. I only watched through the first like three series of Digimon back in my Saturday morning cartoon days. They weren't robots then. Have they been robots since then? Did I miss I the era like of Digimon being I, robots? I feel like there may have been a series where Digimon came to the real world, if not yeah. in the original series by the well, end of the thing. Know. But the the idea is, yeah, they are digital. Robots are mechanical and uh, computer. Yeah. I guess not mechanical, but they're like compute like. You know what I mean? Like they have working parts in them yes. and stuff like that. Digimon are uh, biological in some form. They yeah. eat snacks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sure. There could be ones that that look like them. Uh, Sam mentions Rapidmon and Omnimon. I don't even know what those ones look like. Mega Garurumon or whatever the that you know, one I kind of remember. Mega Gargomon. That just that sounds like I have food in my mouth and I'm trying to say something. <laughs> 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 Were you a, did you Digimon when you were a kid or were you? I didn't. Okay. I didn't like them. I eventually I watched I think one or two of the shows later on. I went through all of the at the time I went through all of the Pokemon content that was on mm -hmm. Netflix and then and then I was like, I'm just gonna move on to Digimon. So I watched all of the mm -hmm. stuff that was on there, but that was four or five years ago. So I I think they've made new stuff. Yeah, I I have not kept up with it, but like the first two series of Digimon, which have the same continuity and they changed up for the third one. The first two series of Digimon were very important to little ten year old me. There was a Digimon movie that came out in theaters, yeah. okay. and I made my brother take me to go see it the weekend it came out, and I know he had no interest in this. <laughs> and he would have, if I'm remembering the times correctly, he would have already been a dad. My nephew was born by then. So we took time out of his important dad life to go take his kid sister to some cartoon movie he doesn't understand because he's a good brother. A good and then brother, yeah. the week after was my birthday. And so I wanted to go see it again because nice. I had to see for my birthday and for opening weekend, both of them. Hell yeah. I was very into Digimon as a young person. Pokemon too. I had, I had room to love both. I'm excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. But Melissa... Yes. I wanted to mention the Evangelion stuff because I'm going to give you a a big hint at what I'm going to be pitching uh, for the review show. Mm. And that's giant robots. Yeah. I, I, I got in, inspired and I was like, you know what? In honor of Evangelion being on Netflix, I'm, I'm going to pitch some giant robot stuff. Now, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, Kyle, but I may remind you that you still have not seen Pacific Rim. I have not. One of my... So, uh, have, have you seen the Twitter account film critic Hulk? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm familiar with it. Whoever runs that account is watching evangelion for the first time <laughs> and they were live tweeting like the first episode or two and mm -hmm. someone reblogged one that 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 i thought was really funny when they 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 they're like wait this is basically just pacific rim <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh god. Yep. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you watch both and then you tell me which one you like better cuz my heart has its answer. So I I I I will say that I thought about putting Pacific Rim on there, but I am not putting Pacific Rim on there. Um uh, there will be, however, a series of 3 movies in an anime show. Huh. And some comics, okie doke, mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. American comics. Not not none of them. They're mangas, mangas, as the uninformed like to what say. Ameri what giant robots has America made besides Megas XLR and the Iron Giant? I guess I'll learn. You'll find out in two days. Okay. Oh, how can I wait?
<laughs> um so yeah that that's that's Kyle c- kind of why I wanted to mention What are that. your top 3 smaller robots? My top 3 smaller robots. We did oh, big. God. Let's do little. <laughs> um you have to go with R2. Mm-hmm. R2 has to be in there. Am I obligated to do so? Because I want to put C3PO's my boy. Yeah, you can put C3PO. He's I don't think he would make my Star list. Wars character. Um what what other good companion robots are are there out there? Um, I haven't seen much of them yet, but I'm also liking the new the new Star Wars robot in Star Wars Jedi: The Fallen Order. Oh, okay. They have they have a new little companion robot uh, for him and i like his design a lot mm-hmm. but it's one of the, like i just i haven't seen but it mm-hmm. i haven't seen much um what else as a small robot so i've got c3po why i could why, my mind is just blank like nothing is coming up i could also say larry 3000 who's just a parody of c but that might be overdoing it <laughs> uh helper from the venture brothers very good okay. mm. going back to big o i would put dorothy on there oh do do dorothy is a good one that's bad. right she is a robot um but are humanoid ones considered little when I said little, I mean not a mech. I was thinking person <laughs> like not, size and not, smaller. Not, not pilotable. Yes, exactly. Um, or or made to be pilotable. Mm. Uh, well, it, it was a, yeah, no. I'll, I'll 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 hold my tongue on that one as I'm getting into semantics of like well in that. Case, case mecha godzilla is not pilotable (laughs) (laughs) the distinction is human sized how like we'll say like well the rogue one bot he's pretty big bot kittens from high school from high score and bonus stage i'm not familiar with that one sam that's a web tune from the early 2000s Ooh, early 2000s um (laughs) days long t- time ago we so we're we're covering titan ae on the review show yeah, this it weekend. does not have a lot in it but it is a sci-fi story yeah but that's also early 2000s it is it and is 2000 itself i believe I, I i was thinking about that as i was watching it i was like man this is this is a 20 year old movie yeah wow I know it's it boggles me how old things are. Kyle, if we're ready to wrap it up, I have a small anecdote to share with you. Go for it. Okay, this is something that happened to me my senior year of high school. I graduated mm-hmm. ten years ago. Did you also? Are we in the same class? We're the I was oh nine. We're the, the, around yes. the same. Okay. Age. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ten years ago, this happened, and I still think about this like once a month. Mm-hmm. So in high school, I was on the newspaper staff. I wrote. Why didn't t- we think of Wally? <laughs> You're right. We were so di- we were just talking about Pixar. God damn we it! We should have forgotten Sweet Wally. <laughs> I'm done. Bye, Kyle. Podcast is over. Career is dead. <laughs> For those of you not watching the video, I just walked away, <laughs> threw my headphones down. <sighs> I quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no there's no time limit on deciding your top three favorite humanoid or smaller robots. This is a game that can go on forever. Should should we come back next week with our top three large robots and top three small robots, as well as Melissa's update on the adult supernatural circus? <laughs> we can talk about all of this. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> so in high school, I worked on the newspaper. 
I had a TV column called What Would Wilkinson Watch? Okay. Mm -hmm. and... Why haven't you told me about this sooner? Why haven't we implemented this into our podcasting <laughs> business strategy? I only did it for one semester. And what I wrote about was... I think I did write a column on Supernatural, and I wrote one about Dollhouse. Okay. I'm 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 actually not familiar with Supernatural. I've never watched it. I I would make fun of my old roommate for watching mm -hmm. it all the t t time and call it stupid natural. And just be like, hey, you watching that show Stupid Natural again? He's like, shut up, Kyle. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, I don't actually Royal hate you. burn, Kyle. Yeah, I was like, I don't actually hate you or the, or the show. I'm just being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, doll, doll, Dollhouse. What yeah, yeah, is yeah. Doll, Dollhouse? Oh, Dollhouse? This was yeah. a show Joss Whedon made in, oh, like, yeah, in that... 2008. Maybe 2009. I forget if it was a fall See, or spring release. Here I was thinking it was something that had to do with Supernatural. No, no. I, these were two separate columns because I pretty much exclusively wanted to talk about genre stuff. I'm like, here's Supernatural. Here's a Joss Whedon sci-fi show. And the angle of the column was basically the last show he had got canceled. So he needs to win this one. It's on on Friday nights. Forget everything else you're doing. Stay home on Friday nights and watch Dollhouse. You know, fight the good fight do a good service there you go so you can see how successful my column was but anyway <laughs> and in... everyone stayed home friday night <laughs> dollhouse still on today a whopping <laughs> 10 years so at the end of the year my journalism teacher uh -huh. mr holmes took everybody out to he took all the graduating seniors from the class this is everybody in newspaper and in yearbook. So he was in charge sure. of both. He took them all out to this end of the year banquet at a place called Incredible Pizza Company. Sounds incredible. It's like a step between <laughs> like uh, it's better than a Chuck E. Cheese, but not quite as, you know, matured as a Dave and Buster's. Did... So hard to ask you and go on this tangent here. It's okay. Did, did, did Chuck E. Cheese change their pizza recipe because i don't know what happened but i remember chuck e cheese pizza being good at one point but now chuck e cheese pizza is garbage when was the last time you had a chuck e cheese pizza a long time ago but like but now it, it it was it was one of those things like i got I, I don't I don't know when exactly, but I got to a certain age and it was this thing of like, oh, I feel like they changed their recipe or the in Google, like they bought different cheese or different dough. And it's just like, this is not as good. They they changed their sauce and it was just bad. And from then on out, it has always been bad. Is Is that true or am I just making it up? I am not personally aware of this at this time in my life. These are but the things I am... that I think about at 30 years old. <laughs> podcast the ride i am certain we'll do an episode about chuck e cheese at some point and then i will tell you if they tell me anything about the okay. pizza ride. <laughs> but we're at this place called incredible pizza company which is like arcade mini golf i think maybe like two bowling lanes mm -hmm. you know one of those places and like a big buffet pizza of course desserts and also like your standard buffet foods you know chicken tenders and do you know, a salad bar and what have you and I remember, clear as day, and I will not forget it until I die, this kid, I think his name was Brad. I think he was the sports editor. I don't know. I never really knew him. But I Sounds saw like him. Sounds like something a Brad would do. Yeah, yeah. There's, he's sitting with a friend at this other table, and she gets up, and she's like, oh, I'm going to go you know, grab some more food. And he says, hey, wait. And he takes off this baseball cap he's wearing, and he hands it to her, and he says, fill my hat up with mashed potatoes and bring it back to me what <laughs> it, ex exactly what i just told you kyle there's no further layers i have no other information i believe she then like laughed it off and went off to go get her ice cream and pie or whatever he did not get the hat full of mashed potatoes but the fact that he asked this is like 
the strongest chaotic neutral move I've ever seen. The most bold, the most brash, fill my hat up with mashed potatoes and bring it back to me. <laughs> like, the, yeah. I, I want to be powerful enough to command something like that. Like, that's my goal. Yeah, it it w- would have been m- less chaotic neutral if he had said please, because then it would have been more <laughs> chaotic true. good. Like, yeah, that's the dividing line between chaotic but good and just, chaotic neutral. He did not say please. Do this and bring it back to me. Just ma- <laughs> ma- matter of fact. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know you're the sports editor. You're not the king. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird yeah that's just a sentence that comes into my head a lot like some men just want to watch the world burn some men just want their hat filled with mashed potatoes and brought back to them <laughs> and when I think about my aspirations when I think about my goals when I want to feel empowered I think fill my hat up with mashed potatoes and bring it back to me <laughs> this is my call to the world. This is my bring me that horizon. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. That's funny. But uh, yeah, speaking of things that boggle you for having happened so long ago, but still yeah. feel fresh. Crazy. I think that about wraps us up for mm-hmm. this week on the captain's log. A little bit of housekeeping for yeah. you guys. We finally recorded and released our mob psycho 100 season two exclusive Mm -hmm. patron only episode of the review show uh so that is up for the three dollar patrons uh last week here on the captain's log we did our e3 blind prediction results Mm -hmm. i'm a big video game fan melissa not as much i had her act as a magic eight ball a a couple of weeks ago and obliviously E3 is now done so we checked back in and uh see see we see how we did we saw how we did we we let's did move that. on <laughs> <laughs> uh last week on the review show we covered quantum and woody yeah Melissa, do you want to say a yes. bit about that this is a valiant comic series about two adopted and now estranged as adults brothers who reunite after their father is murdered and through an accident in his science lab wind up with superpowers Mm -hmm. and they're barely ready to be brothers again they're still fighting over everything and now they have to be superhero partners too yeah so uh go go check that out it's on comiXology unlimited you can read the first two volumes that we did Mm -hmm. um and i think yeah, I think there's a couple more of them on Comixology Unlimited, but we only read the first two. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, go check that stuff out. Uh, I already mentioned we're covering Titan AE this yeah. week on the review show, and then the week after that, we're going to be doing some kind of giant robot thing. A robot you guys for sure. will have to see what we a p- robot with p- us. P- pitch and what, uh, what you pick, Melissa. Mm -hmm. i'll I'll have three options ready for you to pick uh if you guys like what we do here at the captain's log patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us uh for a single dollar you can get all our episodes early you can get access to the live streams of one of our other podcasts the review show Mm -hmm. uh and at the three dollar tier you get all of our exclusive content we have a number of uh exclusive episodes of the review show and yeah, there's one where we talked about some X Files, yes, as I X-Files, previously mentioned. Batman Beyond, Shrek mm-hmm. Retold. Uh, <laughs> we just did Mob Psycho 100 season two. And our uh, next and I think... one is a a weird multimedia web narrative. I'd almost Seven... call it a web comic. Yeah, just it to... is. It is a sort of sequential storytelling re- similar to a comic. Yes, that's, that's a bit but this reductive. Is not like any so, other yeah. comic you've ever read. Yeah, uh, it's um, called seventeen thousand seven seventy six. Or what football will look like in the future? There you go. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I, I had something else that I was going to say. Oh. Uh, I think that down the road we are hoping to do some other exclusive content. Yeah. Uh, so it's not only exclusive episodes mm-hmm. of the review show. Uh, we will switch that up from time to time. 
uh so that it, yeah so it's like hey you might get exclusive episodes of the captain's log or exclusive episodes mm-hmm. of the reactor core and maybe we'll mm-hmm. go back to the review show after that who knows um mm-hmm. you'll get all sorts of stuff there and we also want to give a big shout out to sam and K- 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 and thank Christine. you yeah big thanks to you guys uh for supporting us at the five dollar tier on patreon uh you guys are helping to make this show Mm-hmm. Help us not have to worry about money. So if you too out there want to give us your life savings, we will gladly take it. Uh, if you want us to charge you in- interest, just let me know. I'd be happy to do that as well. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. Uh, you guys can support us at patreon.com slash the whatnots. Uh, mm-hmm. More info about all of our sh- shows at the whatnots.com visit us yeah it's a beautiful website that kyle made exactly you can find all of our podcasts on podcast services around the world just search the whatnots and you'll find us uh Mm -hmm. melissa where can they find you on the internet you can find me on twitter and instagram at wilkywit that's w-i-l-k-y-w-i-t and i am at yo kyle springer uh on both twitter and instagram uh, you guys can uh, get updates for this sh- show or any of our other podcasts uh, at the whatnots. I, I I am losing my mind here. I just had a brain fart. <laughs> we are at the whatnots on, tw- First on Twitter. First you forget Wally, then you forget this. I am. I did just. Uh. I I black out when we're <laughs> well, doing this podcast. Well, I don't podcasts. know what time it is. So I, look, we're we're getting old. Uh, (laughs) 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 that uh is the episode for this week we will be back next week uh with another episode of the captain's log and maybe the results of what our favorite robots are Mm -hmm. uh that being said we will see you next week adios guys Bye. bye thank you so much for watching that episode of the one captain's log uh, go co- comment below what your favorite large robot is, what your favorite small robot is, and if you think Digimon are robots or not. Are they? Who knows? Uh, go subscribe to our channel up there. Go watch one of the videos down that way. That would help us out a bunch. We've got all sorts of other podcasts besides just Captain's Log, uh, and I think you guys can find some stuff that you guys might like. Check it out. We will see you next